Hello, this is Daniel Kiran from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'd like to speak to you briefly uh, today about um, how to conduct a counseling session leading from the beginning, opening the counseling session, deepening the counseling session, and then bringing closure to the session. When a client comes in for a session and sits down, you can uh, sometimes you can simply smile and they'll begin to talk. Or you can be more focused in your opening statement by saying, what would you like to talk about today? And uh, when the client responds to that, they may begin with something superficial or they may begin with something that is a problem that they're facing. Um, if they begin with a current difficulty or issue, so for example uh, a person says that they had a fight with their spouse today or yesterday, uh, you can ask them to say a little bit more about that. So you could say uh, say more about that. It's an invitation to talk. Uh, and then as the person is speaking, you can ask them to talk about their feelings. This helps them to become more aware of their emotions. So uh, you can give them a feeling list, especially early on in the counseling relationship. It's important to educate the client sometimes. Uh, about the variety and range of emotions that they may experience because many times people are uh, not able to put words to their feelings and so you can say so what are you feeling right now as you're talking? Uh, are you feeling maybe a little sad or angry or scared or some other emotion? So prompt the client then to, to uh, put a word to the feeling that they're experiencing in the moment as they are speaking. And uh, you may want to reach for a validation of that by saying, uh, is it okay to feel that? Or you may want to actually validate it as well by saying, that sounds like a normal feeling to have with what you've with what you're describing, with what you've experienced. So you validate the feeling, then you can invite them to say more. For example, if a client is describing uh, a conflict or a fight that they had with their spouse, you can explore a little bit about what that fight was about, what the issues were, and you can ask the client can explore whether or not the client uh, uh, was okay with the way they handled the conflict, whether they spoke up and asserted their issues, their feelings, their emotions, or whether they kept them inside and avoided uh, addressing their issues. And uh, so if a person says I didn't really say anything. I didn't really express my feelings. I guess I kept my feelings inside and I kept it all to myself. And then you can say to the client, so I wonder if that's kind of a pattern for you that when there is a problem or a conflict that you keep your feelings inside. You keep them to yourself. And you don't speak up or you avoid speaking up. So when the person acknowledges that, you can say, so who was the first important person in your life that you had a conflict with or that you had an issue with and you didn't speak up? in that situation. So they may go back to childhood for example and that's part of the deepening process 
of the counseling session is to take the client from the present issue or problem that they're describing to an earlier time and eventually to the earliest time that they experienced that uh, situation that kind of issue uh, and so you, you say then uh, talk a little bit more about that that's an invitation to talk this gives the client the opportunity to begin to explore and to vent uh, perhaps unresolved feelings about uh, an unresolved conflict from a much earlier period in his or her life and uh, when a person talks about that and says that they kept their issue to themselves or they didn't dare speak up then it's important to validate that as well by saying it makes sense you would uh, keep that inside because you were a child and perhaps it was a way of protecting yourself what were you afraid might have happened if you had spoken up to your parent, to your father, to your mother, for example. Um, then they might describe their fear of being punished. Uh, maybe an, they might report an experience of abuse or an experience of uh, withdrawal or abandonment. So there's always a story or an explanation about why the client developed a passive withdrawn personality style especially in relation to issues and conflicts so you're going to validate that by saying it makes sense you would have kept that inside then because you were afraid that if you'd spoken up you might have been hurt in some way uh, and it worked well for you then and helped you to survive as a child does it work well for you now in your life and they'll probably say no it doesn't work no and you can say what what are the disadvantages to you when you don't speak up in situations or when you have issues and problems in your relationship now with your husband and uh, she may then go on to describe a feeling uh, resentful uh, feeling depressed, uh, feeling stress, anxiety. Because what happens to the client when they don't uh, air their feelings and speak up about their issues is that they have to carry that around and it contributes to their stress in their life. And it may come out in the form of depression or in the form of even physical complaints and things of that nature so your goal then is to help the client uh, change their unhealthy way of relating to a healthy way and one of the ways we can begin to help a client do that is by learning to be assertive through the use of role-playing and role-playing for example the relationship with their parent in which they actually do then speak up to the parent now this can be anxiety producing and frightening for a client to do that because when you role-play that the client will go back into their childhood uh, state of being which they've actually in fact brought forward into their adult relationships but what you're wanting to help the client to do is to grow up in their relationships including the parental relationship as well as their current adult relationships so instead of repeating the pattern that they began in childhood we're wanting to help them grow up and mature in their ways of relating so this is where I'll close for now and perhaps at another time I'll speak about how to use role-playing how to use psychodrama, how to use enactment exercises and empty chair techniques to help a client grow. Thank you.